In environmental sciences, we are going to learn the topic 3, managing the urban environment. In that, you had already learned 1 and 2 units thoroughly and also have written the tests. Now, we are going to third unit, environmental problems of rural areas. The major problems of rural areas are linked with agricultural activities because most of their occupation is agriculture. The usage of chemical fertilizers, pesticides and various agrochemicals is the first problem. Then land transformation and the third problem is mining industrial activities, tourism resort development and the fourth problem is over exploitation of biological and physical resources. Now we'll move to the first problem. Excessive usage of agricultural chemicals, chemical like chemical fertilizers, pesticides and various agrochemicals made the soil polluted. Land gets polluted with the residues of varieties of chemicals and the soil quality comes down, deteriorates on with the time. And second problem is transformation of land. Habitats like forests, wetlands, pasture lands are often made into agricultural lands. Now the third problem, mining. Mining industries and industrial activities Tourist resort developments, nowadays we find so many resorts developed in the village areas, rural areas and we often go stay, home stay etc, no? such activities and several other infrastructure development in rural areas gradually transform local environment. Excessive livestock rearing, fishery activities and other economic activities of rural environment also have negative impact of various component local environment. Now the fourth area of the problem is over exploitation. So with raising demands of population, over exploitation of biological and physical resources take place. For they, de they do deforestation, cut down forest resource for the teak, wood and so many other things children. So that over exploitation also leads to the deforestation. Okay, this has resulted in deforestation, desertification and loss of water resources, underwater water also the um, water table also is reduced, biodiversity and wildlife is also has reduced. Now we are moving on to self-help group finance. A self-help group or SHG is a village-based financial intermediary group. Usually 10 to 20 local women or men. The same mindset and same occupation, almost similar age group. Such people will join together, form and form into a group called SHG self-help group most self-help groups are located in india though it is in india some of the shc also we find in south asia south east asia such countries also such areas also we find members take regular savings contributions over a few months until there is enough capital in a group to begin with so they gather they collect some amount, some sufficient dignified amount is gathered means then they start lending. Funds may be then lent back to the members to others in the village of for any purpose, for their uh, interest. In India, many SHG are linked to banks for the delivery of micro credit. NABAD is such bank only. Okay. A self group may be registered or unregistered. It typically comprises a group of micro entrepreneurs having homogeneous social and economic background. All voluntary coming together, voluntarily they come together hmm, to save regular, regularly small amounts of money. Like cheap funds and all you come across, no? Like that this is also one of the 
self help group mutually agreeing to contribute a common fund and to meet their emergency need on the basis of mutual helps they pool their resources to become financially stable taking loans from the money collected by that group and by making everybody in that group self employed suddenly money will not come to no children and they don't have any land or any resource to mortgage also or they don't have any guarantee such kinds of such kind of people this is very helpful they don't require any of the registration sometimes they will be registered sometimes unregistered groups are also there the group members use collective wisdom and peer pressure to ensure proper end use of credit and timely repayment this system eliminate the need of collateral and is closely related to the to that of solidarity lending widely used by microfinance institution to make the book keeping simple enough to be handled by the members flat interest rates are used for most of loan calculation there there won't be any complication they'll keep one small book make entry in it that is enough got it children self groups are started by non governmental organization called ngos that are generally have broad anti poverty agendas self help groups are seen as instruments for variety of goals including empowering women developing leadership abilities among poor people increasing school enrollments and improving nutrition and the use of birth control financial intermediation is generally seen more as an entry point to these other goals rather than the primary objective i hope you under understood shg role in rural areas now we are moving to development of secondary cities to counter migra- migration counter migration in previous part you have learnt to prevent rural people coming off to migration we are in, in return returning them to their own rural areas from the cities is called counter migration you have already learnt it now due to urbanization certain changes which take place in the concerned area are going you are going we are going to discuss a land use change in towns and cities land becomes transformed rapidly for number of activities and housing settlement road infrastructure build up commercial centers small and medium industrial unit construction and recreation places so land will be changed into housing settlements houses housing settlement roads infrastructure buildings commercial centers like malls and all so like that they are changing there is usually master plan for urban development recreation places means our you seen on down near the school the swimming pools and uh, so many uh, courts like tennis court like that now there is usually a master plan for urban development all the new township is grown in a strategic location after proper environmental impact assessment but expansion of old townships and cities took place in mostly unplanned means due to public encroachment of adjoining agricultural lands now housing in cities the towns and towns there are so many other problems also there is some regulatory authority for approval of housing plan keeping aside the appropriate sanitary drainage layout but most of the cities they are planned got it in most planned cities it is like that in today residential commercial industrial institution zones they have learned in zoning isn't it are marked properly before construction by the town and the country planning authority but it that is why planning first plan must be sanctioned all that you have learned now isn't it then uh, then goes to the 
what we call it as a, a construction stats now um, but some reasons there will be unplanned also these unplanned developments you have learnt in previous chapter uh, unit slums and all that time the problem starts in earthquake zone housing schemes are somewhat different from other zones now the migration and floating population every city and township was planned for desired number of population accordingly civic amenities like water supply electric supply electricity and waste management are made but for in employment in unorganized sectors like mobile trading household job, jobs putting an unlicensed carts a good number of poor population migrate from neighboring states and villages are even countries too thus population of cities enhance day by day causing deterioration of deterioration of civic amenities slums were created in the roadside canal banks and waste places through rapid railway transit large population movement takes place to the city every day this is a usual scenario in cities like bombay kolkata chennai and 